there's always a lot of new things coming out in sim racing that make it exciting to go out and drive. But many of the things that make me most excited are some of the content coming out for the very old or the oldest of simulators. What you're looking at here is IndyCar Racing 2, released in 1995 and 1996, uh, really the last IndyCar dedicated simulator that came out. It was built by Papyrus on the NASCAR Racing 1 engine and is a classic in my book. And it's one I've been playing for many, many years. I think it's an equal mix of the nostalgia, the pure fun it is uh, to drive in this sim, and also the fact that it's IndyCars and you can race IndyCars uh, that were contemporary when the game came out, but are, are pretty awesome by today's standards, being the mid to late 90s uh, ultra high speed champ cars. And perhaps best of all, and something that keeps me coming back to the sim 26 years later, is that there's still new cars and tracks and things being released for it. A group over at uh, IndyCarRacing2.net has released what we're looking at here, the Rio Oval, the Emerson Fittipaldi Speedway at Jacarapagua. This was a trapezoid-shaped oval that was raced from 1996 through 2000 by cart, and, and it's one that kind of existed for IndyCar Racing 2, but just as a basic layout. And in the last year or so, a group at the IndyCarRacing2.net site have put together the final track. Now the track itself may look simple, but making tracks for these old simulators is not easy at all. The, much of the editing is done in text editors and manually moving around uh, the 3D points for all the polygons. There's a lot of things to consider and much of the knowledge is just trial and error to get the track stood up. So this little community has formed that's uh, making some tracks, and this isn't the only one they've come out with, um, but they're making them, they look pretty much identical to the stock tracks quality wise uh, that came with IndyCar 2 and even better in a lot of areas there's more textures and things going on and they fit right in and having this track for indycar racing 2 completes somewhat this era of kart racing i think indycar 2 is a fun sim to race this kind of kart era in and having this track is absolutely essential it was one of the main ovals that the series raced at during those years so hats off to wolf pd foxman pavel 69 checkpoint 10 dennis sam sapai i'm sure there's others as well uh, that contributed to this but i know that's the group credited and i'm so excited to see tracks and cars and things continually come out for the old simulators uh, i know i boot them up all the time and hopefully by showing this to some folks you get the itch to go try out indycar 2 pretty easy to find set up with dos box these tracks and everything are easy to install as well i'll put everything in the description so i thought it'd be fun today tonight to break in this new track and do a little quick race 21 laps uh with the 1996 kart cars the first year that they would have raced at this track uh the race itself in real life was won by andre ribeiro which he's a brazilian himself so it must have been a heck of a party after it but i remember this race most because of the massive crash that mark blundell had during it this track itself was not very safe it felt a little like a temporary oval uh, raced a lot or races a lot we'll show in a second but races a lot like a street course uh, very flat I don't think there's any banking to it at all and it is around and through the Jacarapagua Speedway which I showed a couple videos ago when I was looking at some Automobilista 2 stuff. Uh, much different uh, age of simulators to be looking at here, but the track itself, it has the main straightaway from Jacarapagua and then uh, trapezoid shaped corners. So the angle at which cars enter specifically turns one and turns four, which I believe is where the accident was, uh, is quite severe. This was predating safer barriers and things. Uh, and these days definitely would not be a track that a series would race at. So Mark Blundell took a heck of a smash into the wall and luckily recovered from his injuries, but very scary moment. I remember that most about this circuit itself, but they did race here uh, for quite a few years afterwards. I think ultimately uh, they stopped racing here due to financial problems. And of course, this speedway is no longer in existence. So let's relive it. Let's test out this track, uh, this new track for a 26 year old sim um, and, and do a quick race here. 21 laps starting from the rear around Rio. All right, so here we are on the grid, and I should mention, I'm able to use modern steering wheels and pedals with this. It's running through DOSBox, uh, and so you're able to map modern controls. Uh, I'll throw a tutorial that Ted Meat wrote up for NASCAR Racing 1, which is important to, uh, to try out because it helps get the steering set up so that it's a little more accurate um, and, and you're able to control the cars better. But of course, predates, IndyCar Racing 2 predates force feedback, so there's none of that going on. But you'd be surprised after you race this for a little while how much feeling you do develop just from your eyes and, and watching the cars. It's quite exciting. We'll come around here on the pace lap. It's gonna be a pretty quick race. 
the laps themselves are quite quick, but it is a, it's a fairly large circuit. Uh, a little samey at first, especially just with the concrete walls, but it honestly, go watch some of the videos from the races then. It looks very much on brand. Very accurate with the mountains in the background too. But we'll come up to turn four here. I'll put the boost back up. I've got it mapped to the little spinning wheel on my steering wheel too, which is very exciting. But come out of turn four, give the AI a little bit of space because I know things will get all congested coming to the start. And I should have a pretty quick car during practice. I was able to get into the top three, but green flag is out. We'll head down the straightaway. Ooh, car's gonna slide up into me. Just to let off the throttle a little bit. So come down to turn number one. Oh, I'm gonna lose all the positions. I don't know when everybody's gonna slam on the brakes. Ooh. cut up towards the back, trying to get back on the throttle. I should be able to pass some of these cars very easily. We'll see if I can come up the inside of one of them. Stuck up behind Krasnov here. Ooh, almost gonna over rev the car. Come through the second of the top of the trapezoid. Ooh, onto the grass, onto the curbing. It, it feels a little like a road course. You can see what I mean just by even the styling of the track, having curbs on the inside, maybe a little like gateway pretty flat track and here this is the straightaway that's also a part of the road version here we go up the inside we'll pass a few cars use all the revs gotta be careful not to blow the engine it's a short race though so shouldn't need to conserve anything all right we'll come down to the first corner all the way down to second gear for the two tight corners and i don't exactly want to get my car in a weird spot and IndyCar 2 definitely take a little bit of learning almost. You just kind of have to learn how they move so that you avoid them more or less. But surprisingly good races. There is strategy and everything. Of course, we won't deal with any of that in the race today, just being so short. But it is fun to do long races on this sim. And I've been toying with the idea of uh, after we finish the NASCAR Racing 1 series, maybe taking a crack at some full distance IndyCar 2 races of the first turn so I'm blowing by some of these cars up to 20th already. I know the front few are pretty quick so I'm not expecting to pass everybody easily. Stuck in behind Paul Tracy here in the Marlboro car. Lift out the throttle a little bit nowhere to go here. We got Fittipaldi himself in front of me. I believe Emerson had a big crash at Michigan in 1996 which pretty much ended his career. Maybe not for injury, just decided to give it up. Pretty wild, the 1970s F1 champion was racing IndyCar, car and enjoying it in 1996. Right, we'll come down to the first corner here. So we've passed the majority of the slower cars, stuck in behind Adrian Fernandez now. stream a little bit. It's, it is a little risky to follow another car directly in IndyCar 2, especially going to the brake zones like that. You might just not line up with the braking. Get brake checked, maybe. Swing to the inside of Fernandez and his Tecate car. Come across the line, so 17 to go. Ooh, gonna run deep. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, lucked out there, splitting them down the middle. Get back up the gears. So up to 15th now. Man, I don't think you can do a move like that twice. Thought the whole thing was ending there. We'll come down to second gear though. Gonna run a little bit wide. Try to get on the throttle as soon as possible. The other Penske in front of me. Not doing so hot today with the Penskes. Try to brake a little more appropriately this time coming into turn one. Got that little pack in front of me. I'm also looking at my mirror now. I got Stefan Johansson behind me who's still a, an advisor in IndyCar today. I know he's got he kind of works as a driving development coach. 
I believe for Formula One for a while too. The holding station now, I think the first lap haven't passed anybody. 15 to go. Side by side, it's not going to be easy to pass. Oh, and we do have Ribeiro in front of me, so that's the winner of the real race. Looks like he's falling back. I always like the LCI car, the color scheme. Primary colors, but a little darker. Who thought it looked pretty cool? All right, we'll come down to the fourth corner. Snuck it up the inside. Try not to get pinched down too much. Let it run as far as I can out. So 14 with 14 laps to go. I just need to keep the trend up. Ooh, I'm gonna understeer a bit there. So you do have in cockpit adjustments and everything in IndyCar 2 as well. And you can see right to the right of the rev counter on the dash, there's three bars there, an F and R and a B. And that's your front roll bar, rear roll bar, and then brake bias adjustment. Now on a track like this, over a full run, you definitely want to use it. I think that understeer in this lap in turn one was more of a driving style thing, but especially on the ovals, oh, it looks like I might be able to get past two of these guys here. Come down to turn one, just trying to outbreak myself. Keep it mundane, keep it fast. Here we go, around the inside. But over an oval race, especially 500 mile race, start off with 40 gallons of fuel in the tank of these cars and absolutely need to do adjusting on the roll bars to try to even the suspension out as that weight change happens. And you can see I'm kind of stalling out in fifth gear. This car does have six gears. I was thinking six might have been for drafting, but I've got quite a lot of wing on this car, which you have to have around a track like this with it being, you know, so flat. Come across the line with 12 to go. Got Bobby Ray Hall in front of us, I think in that awesome Miller genuine draft car. Looks like Unser Jr. too has been making up some of the spots with me here. second gear just sticking behind i think this was the years that the genuine draft car had the rainbow wings down the side too which is such a cool paint scheme but we got a good run on ray hall now it's a little bit faster in a straight line than some of the slower cars here 11 laps to go up to p11 so it's working out so far This might just be long enough. The field spread is quite big, and there were 32 cars in the race, so it might be just enough laps to catch a few of the slower cars, which on a track like this absolutely would come into play. Although it's a big track, it races a lot like a short track, a lot like a road course, so lap traffic is absolutely something to uh, look out for. I'm coming up to Jimmy Vassar now, so about to break the top 10. See if I can stick on the inside. Quite deep braking, aggressive move to the inside. Just get the inside wheels on the curbing there. The curb itself, I don't think, has any kind of different properties than the actual track surface, but certainly don't want to touch that grass to the inside. There might be a little bit of camber change on the curbing, too, just to upset the car a little bit. Oh, we're going to go too deep, too deep. Oh, gonna hit the front wing there. Wow, oh, just totally missed the braking that time. So we'll see what I can do to, uh, that's the rear bar. I wanna lower the front bar, see if I can get more bite, but this wing damage is absolutely gonna hurt the car a bit. on the throttle though see if I can keep 10th I don't know if I'm gonna be able to storm up the field anymore with that kind of damage almost over rev the car too just trying to get down the gears even a little slower in fifth gear there come down to second 
maybe first for the fourth corner, understeering a bit. But clearly a lot of detail went into this track. I don't want to forget about this. The mountains in the background, too, line up with where they would actually be. So the horizon itself is at least semi-accurate, which is very cool to see. That's Those are little details that, certainly for a game like this, if you're just trying to bust out a track, might not be the most important thing. But the folks making these tracks actually put you know, a lot of care and work into it. Want something that's fun to race, represents the actual circuit. It's got two cars behind me who come up, I think on Robbie Gordon. I don't know why he's so slow. Maybe a little damage as well. Just trying to get back on the throttle as soon as I can. I don't think that was for position, so he definitely has a problem to be that slow. But builds me a little bit of a gap to the cars behind. So we'll see here, seven laps to go. Come down to second gear actually it feels okay despite that big run into the wall much more than you could get away with so I know the group right now is finishing up a couple we're working on I don't know how far done they are here oh but John Stone's gonna go to the inside oh he touches me right, that's Johansson so barges me out of the way <laughs> getting past my damaged car oh we're in 10th again though so definitely some weird stuff with the positions going on got a very slow car there to my right Let's see if I can get around the inside of him definitely would be a lapped car the lap car is definitely spicing up the racing. Luckily, the fast guys are able to get around them pretty well, which is good to see. <laughs> a lot of modern sims don't get that right. Trying to get back on the throttle. We got Vassar coming to my right. He really wants that top 10 back. Five laps to go. Oh, we're going to get stuck up behind. This might be Fangio. Fangio the third. Yes, they are related. Oh, Vassar's going to get around the outside. I just don't want to understeer up into him. He's going to get held up a little bit, though. Oh, there's not really going to be a place to go here. I got Ray Hall coming up behind me, too, now. Let's see if we can get to the inside. It might be Zampadri, actually. Can't remember who drove that car in 1996, but able to get around him, get back on the throttle. So still in touch of Vassar with Ray Hall behind. But I was saying, the group is working on other tracks, so they also uh, did Caesar's Palace, which did hold a couple kart races in the 80s, uh, which is a cool track to see in the sim, although I'm not sure the cars, the car sets exist for those years. But it'd be fun to try out as well. Same track the Formula One ran, uh, or same location. I think the layout might be a little different. And I believe right now they're working on uh, Tainami Park, which will be great for some of the late 80 seasons and San Air Speedway as well. So all of these tracks, if you want to be able to race the actual calendars from years that, you know, this sim, I think, fit uh, their needed, needed tracks. So it's great to see somebody rounding out the schedule. There's also lots of other improved circuits for the game. Nearly every one of the original tracks has alternate versions or at least graphical updates that you can install to make everything, you know, as best as it can be. So it's a really cool sim for this era of racing. Just got a few laps to go now. I'm just about the same speed as Vassar, but with the damage on the front, definitely difficult to understeering on the entry to the corners. Not sure what happened on the one lap. I'll have to watch back the brain fade. Oh, gonna understeer there coming out of turn four. Ray Hall's right on me now. See if I can stiffen that rear roll bar as well. So two laps to go. Nice entry into turn one. Oh, I'm gonna understeer in the exit. That's where it's hurting me right now. Let's see if I can maybe late apex a little bit better. Right, we'll 
come to the end of the straightaway. Was gonna see if I could cut it in late apex. I ended up just missing the apex completely, but we'll come to the line, should get the white flag. One more lap to go. Perfect, just the fuel light comes on as we're crossing the line. Just wait that extra second to get on the gas. Make sure I don't understeer coming out of the corner. So, not the perfect race I would have hoped for, but... So come to the end of the straightaway, not close enough to get around Vassar, but still a fun one to show off the track. I think, uh, like I said, great track to have in IndyCar, too, just to round out that early kart era that the sim does so well. We'll cross the line, 11th position, from 30 seconds, not too shabby, especially getting around the AI and IndyCar racing, too. So I just want to say thanks to the group over at IndyCarRacing2.net for putting this track together. It's amazing to see tracks come out for, for this sim so many years later, and also tracks that I'm very interested in racing on. So can't thank them all enough. I'm going to put a link to IndyCarRacing2.net in the description. You can register there. I don't think you can see too much on the forums um, before you register, but you can register there if you're interested in reading up on what's going on. But they just revamped their archive section as well with a lot of the tracks and things that are available in the forums which i don't think you need registration for so you can jump in there and download what you want indycar 2 works on dosbox like i said i'll include the link to ted meets uh tutorial on how to get these things running as best as they can be um and go out there and have some fun with it so if you like this let me know maybe i'll do some more indycar 2 sometime i could also show off some of the other cars and tracks and stuff that have uh, recently come out for it but thank you for watching and i'll see you all again next time